Well, I'd like to introduce to you Bill Jansen on the left and Bill Robertson on the right. Unfortunately, Stan Griffiths can't be here just at the moment, but hopefully we'll see him a bit later. Now, up to the present, our tractioning has been fairly serious, but um, if that's all you like, we'll skip the next half an hour or so of tape because we're going to have some fun. I'll give this microphone to the boys and they can tell you a little bit about what we're all about. <coughs> the line started here about 1956. Uh, this, this Stan Griffith got the idea because of all the demise of the many interurban and trolley lines around the country. He wanted to have one of his own. The line has been here now over 30 years, which is longer than the life of many small town trams, as well as most interurban lines in the, in the United States. But uh, we've had our fun, and uh, as we will today. Yes, it's been a long time since we've been coming out here, and there's always new problems to replace old ones. It's our golf game. It's our full recreation when we can get out, and we wish we could get out here more. Okay. Um, the power supply is 240, 240 volts AC. Um, there's a switch down in the lower box. A bit hard to see with the contrast, and there's a couple of transformers up the tree. There's a knife switch in that open box there and um, the rest is live. It is two foot gauge by the way and um, it's about uh, what three quarters of a mile of track boys? Yeah about three quarters of a mile of track. Um, I haven't got a plan of the track to show you but I think if you said it's a bit like a, an HO scale layout that's crammed onto a board 3 by 6 or thereabouts in giant scale, well that gives you some idea. Uh, a difference in elevation. Yes, yes, very much three-dimensional. Three uh, you possibly see some of the track disappearing over that hill there. Well, we're going to go down to the car barn now. Uh, we may have some trouble getting in, but um, like nothing here is terribly solid, so I'm sure we'll manage somehow. And this is the barn. and. Bill Jansen's trying to uh, get the door open. We don't happen to have a key, but um, I think he's confident of getting in. There we are. We'll go and see what this road reveals. There's a little Bernie. Beside it's the bogey car. I'll wait till the doors are open. Interurban bogey car, box motor type. Um, unfortunately it doesn't track real well and it's virtually never run. There's a the little open car, fairly low capacity, and beside it there's the half and half line car. No doubt we'll be in business soon. Some more electrics on the shed there, another transformer, and uh, there's the wire out outside coming out of the shed so it's necessary to reassemble a trolley pole. A bit like mine number one, it collapses completely when it gets really caught. Better than pulling all the wire down. We'll be off again fairly shortly on the first trip of the day. <laughs> Don't know when the line was last used so there may be any surprises along the way, maybe even cows grazing on the track. Now, we can uh, remove, well, this is a lot of your weight, it's just as well to keep our stuff, most of the stuff on. Where would you like to take shots from here? Oh, in the cab if there's room. Yes. Go ahead, get inside. I don't mind the... We've got the trolley boy on the back. Don't call me boy. <laughs>
That's the inspection pit up ahead. Yeah, it was going to be an overhead bridge over the over the fence down here, but he, he uh, changed plans and route and put in a cattle crossing. Oh, so that the you know was sharp. What's that, Bill? Yellow or white? These are flat, so they're not so good that way. They shouldn't be sharpened on the edges. got the switch spike now. That's it's still bad if you hit this real fast it'll probably derail. Well there is track down there somewhere. <laughs> Seems to be. It's lubricating the rail. Yeah. feeder coming from that line up here down to this one. Overhead or track or both? No track, just overhead. It's just so slippery, is it? I was afraid to wind it up. It seems to move into a slip right away. Yeah. A couple of trips will fix that by now. Well, it may not improve it any though. Is it the rail is rusty now and it's less inclined to slip than when it gets burnished.
don't, I don't, he doesn't have a trolley frog there, I don't think. the top of the line. Well we've just come back down the single track section and uh, we're going to continue down back towards the barn. So I'll hop on the back this time. There should be room beside Bill here. I just had trouble with the set of points but we're ready now. I don't know if you can see the live 240 dangling just above my head.
the switch. sudden. You can't really see it but we got all the way back to the barn and just at the last minute crunch bang yeah. fell fell between the tracks.
Opening days like today tend to be a little bit few and far between and consequently running days are often fix-it days. We had a line pole fall down a while ago. You might remember when we were doing a trip up the hill earlier in the tape, some fellows had a chainsaw going. Well, I think they disturbed something and our pole fell down across the wire. Well, we fixed that and just now we're tensioning up the overhead. One thing I might point out, however, much to your dismay, horror or otherwise, is that the overhead's still alive at 240 volts. And there they are just holding onto it with their hands and just relying on sometimes their shoes for insulation. The reason this camera's jiggling around a little bit is that I have my shirt off and I'm being eaten all over by mosquitoes, legs, arms, everywhere. So I uh, must just apologise for the jerking. The problem has caused the car to be taken up the pit. Um, that's the traction motor there driving through a V-belt. There's obviously some form of reduction in there with a chain to the front wheels. I'll go around the other side and I'll show you the reversing mechanism. Reversible by reversing the brushes and the controller activates this through levering and the lever came off the end of the motor and uh, you can see that's one direction and that's the other. That gives you not only a speed variation but also your forwards and reverse. Quite a simple way of doing things. It's not really possible to get a good view of the reduction system on it. At the moment and you can see a bit more of the drive system. They're just about to take it down off the pit. When you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready if you are. I'd say the trolley pole was hooked down. They've just spent a bit of time uh, changing the catenary system. So sort of twin catenary wires now holding the contact wire down the long straight, so we'll see how that goes. Well, it's too sharp a bend there, I guess. It flew off. It's too sharp a bend to go fast. Yeah. We're eating a pound tonight at his house. Inside the burning at the moment, thinking back it's the photograph of this car with somebody inside it that made me realise that you can fit adults inside a two foot gauge tram car and that was really the, the germ of the idea that got me thinking about building my own car. This one at the moment has a controller working at only one end, quite a nice little controller by the way and by means of a throw over switch you get dynamic brakes. This car's got two motors with chain drive to each axle and they're permanent magnet motors, but quite large ones, however. Um, I'll go down and see the controller a bit. I said quite a nice little controller. That's Stan who leases the property and is probably basically the owner of the system. Although the two bills have helped him with it from the start. This is probably the fastest of the cars.
Did you lose the pole again? I think we're in trouble on this board. All right. Oops, a new experience. <laughs> <laughs> 